Welcome to the next episode of Mondays with Mark, and it's September, and in this episode we want to talk all about how important agriculture is to the state of California and how the School of Veterinary Medicine is ensuring that we keep food safe and secure, that we ensure that our agriculture community is thriving. The first topic we want to talk about is the avian population. Come join me. I'm here with Dr. Maurice Pateski, who is a world-renowned expert on avian diseases and who's done a lot of work on modeling of diseases of migratory birds. Uh, Maurice, tell me a little bit more about your work. We have about 600,000 um, non-migratory waterfowl in the Central Valley. In the fall, we're gonna jump up to about six million waterfowl. If you work for a large commercial poultry company and you have literally thousands of farms spread out across multiple states, it's very difficult for one or two or three veterinarians to really understand where the biggest risk is. And the reason waterfowl are really, really important is because they are the main reservoir of avian influenza. So we use um, various technologies, including telemetry and radar, to predict where waterfowl are located relative to, for example, the 44,000 commercial poultry farms that we have in the U.S. And you can use that information to share with the poultry industry and say, hey, this time of year, or we're seeing an un unusual spike of disease that you need to be aware of. That's the kind of information that companies can use in order to kind of triage risk, focus right. their biosecurity efforts and things like we that. Need. Thank you for all the work you're doing. Yep, thank you. Thanks for having me. We're here at the UC Davis Dairy Barn. Dr. Okello is a specialist in dairy health. He actually works down at the Vet Med Teaching Research Center at our facility in Tulare, where some of the largest dairy production facilities are in, in the country. We're looking at um, alternatives to antimicrobial drugs and also we're trying to develop new uh, diagnostic kits that can be used at the pen site. You're worried about this dairy cow that may have an infection somewhere and you can do the test right there. Yes, yes, yes. And this one has a cough, so you <laughs> might need to diagnose it right now. It's very important for the veterinarian and also for the producers to make a decision in a, in a short amount right. of time. Rapid diagnostics, yeah. accurate diagnostics, and knowing when you have to and when you shouldn't use antibiotics. Absolutely. I know you've trained in Uganda, you've trained in Belgium. How do you see the work that happens here um, helps other countries around the world? Now we live in an interconnected world. so. When you talk about challenges like antimicrobial resistance, we have a lot of movement. Yep. So it's, we need to control the resistance at a global level. Yep. So even if the animals aren't moving, the bacteria and the, the pathogens are still potentially being moved all over the world. Yes, we human beings, we do move the bugs a lot. We, we do the moving. <laughs> yes. I understand. Thank you. One of our foundations has always been helping the cattle industry and foothill abortion was something that was having a huge impact. We were able to identify the agent, and just recently we've been able to create a vaccine that's commercially available. I wanted to share a little bit more about other disease work that we're doing in research around vaccines. John, thanks for joining us today. Tell me a little bit about your research with pink eye. Well, pink eye is a disease in cattle. It's the most common eye disease of cattle. It's seen all over the world. I've been conducting research um, at, at different sites in California, primarily at the UC ANR Sierra Foothills Research and Extension Center. Wow, and you're doing an intranasal vaccine and measuring the efficacy as it relates to this bacterial disease that affects the eyes in cattle. Yes, that's right. The goal there is to try to boost the antibody levels on the eye surface, and the surface of the eye is where the first encounter, so to speak, happens between the bacteria that we um, associate with this disease and that it's important to know it, the disease is different in cattle compared to human pink eye because in cattle it can cause a deep corneal infection that might actually lead to blindness in the animal. Your research here really looks at ways that we can develop this vaccine and help animals all over the world. That's correct. You know agriculture is a hugely important component here in California, and we're actually responsible for helping to feed much of the world. The School of Veterinary Medicine is involved in many ways with research and with training and providing service to these wonderful animals. 
We couldn't do that without the great partnerships that we have. That includes the College of Ag and Environmental Sciences, uh, Ag and Natural Resources, the USDA, the State Department of Food and Ag. So thank you to all of our partners.